Hey everyone, it's Sequoia with the Chase Street Renaissance. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're not, welcome back. So I tried to record this video, um, which is going to be about some things to consider when you're starting your candle business, some things to consider when you're funding your candle business. And I felt like I was rambling, so I redid it. So I'm gonna give you a couple tips and pointers on some, maybe some ways you can save a little bit money in funding your candle business. I tried to go down a list and use my iPad and that whole thing. But it was just so not genuine and I was rambling and it just, it was so wrong. So I'm going to cue the intro and try to get this through this video as easily as I can. Um, I do a lot better when I am doing tutorials and DIYs and the camera is not facing me. So like I said, we're just going to cue the intro and I'm going to try to get through it. <laughs> The, really the main point of this video was to give you some ways to reduce your waste. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but the planet's dying and I care. So <laughs> um, I know it's not 100% avoidable right now um, to completely reduce waste when it comes to candle making. There are a lot of bottles that we buy for our fragrance oil, that's plastic. Um, if we're not repurposing it, it goes right into the trash. Um, if you live in an area like I do where recycling is like a myth, then it's going right into the trash, which is really unfortunate. Um, and quiet as it's kept, recycling standards are actually pretty high. So a lot of the stuff that goes into your recycling bin probably doesn't even meet the standards to be recycled. Um, like pizza boxes, they don't get recycled because they're greasy. Um, boxes that have a picture on them that are kind of shiny and gloss. Let's say you bought like a, a Presto pot or something like that and the boxes uh, got a, a sheen on it. Um, I've been told that they don't get recycled. I haven't done my research on it, but anyway, this isn't about recycling, but this is about trying to cut down your waste, which essentially will cut down uh, the amount of money that you have to spend. Um, you're still gonna have to spend some money, but you might not have to spend as much as often, if that makes sense. So the main thing is to consider um, all of the things that go into your packaging. Um, I know a lot of times we like to add little sample size melts into our packaging. I know a lot of us use those six uh, square clamshells and those clamshells, I can guarantee you're going right to the trash. Nobody is recycling them. Um, and that's what I used to use. I used to use the clamshells. I actually stopped using them the minute I ran out. I didn't purchase them again. I didn't really have a solid plan on what I was going to use, but I knew I wasn't going to buy the clamshells anymore. So what I did was I started to buy a lot of silicone molds. Silicone molds are reusable. Um, you can clean them. And I mean, that's pretty much it. They're reusable. Anything that's reusable is going to be more ideal and a money saver to you. Um, as opposed to a clamshell, a plastic clamshell that you're going to use once, someone's going to buy and get thrown away. So prime example is I popped out one of these little squares. So these are going to be my sample wax melts. This is all the same scent. And this is a, I, what is this? I believe this is 80. Yes. Eight rows of 10. So it's an 80 square silicone mold. And I believe it's for chocolate. Like it, it wasn't made for the purpose of using um, a pouring wax into it, but it works. So what I do is I pour my, my wax into it and I get these glassine bags from Amazon. And I think it was like a pack of a hundred for like $7 and 98 cents or something like that, free shipping. And I put this into the bag, I write what the scent is, and then, and then I actually have these burlap bags that I then stick the glassine bag into to make it a little bit more pretty. And that's how I package my sample wax melts. These burlap bags, also really inexpensive. Um, and I got, I believe I got 50 of them. So between the two, I think I maybe spent $20 on my burlap bags, which fit my style of my business, and the glassine bags. And now I don't have to spend another $50 on clamshell molds because I have this silicone mold, which is reusable, and I can get 80 sample wax melts out of it. And so I decided to go to that style of packaging 
because for my sample melts, I was using these one ounce clamshells that I get from, I would get from Maple Street Candle Supply. And then this would cost me money. So I would have maybe a package of 50 to 100 of these top and bottom that I would then have to sit out on my table and pour, you know, 50 or 100 of these per cent. So it, to me, it just, it was hurting my heart. It was very wasteful. I didn't like it. Um, I still have these just kind of sitting around in a box down here. I'm probably not going to use them. I'll probably resell them to whoever's interested. And um, I decided to just go away from that style. So consider silicone molds. Um, I also have these silicone molds here for my wax melts that I sell and don't give away. Um, and I think this is 37. I don't know, I'm not gonna count it. Are you gonna count it? You can count it if you want to, but I think this holds about 37 wax melts. And what I do is I buy glass jars to put them in. Not these in particular, I was just kind of playing around with this style. Uh, these are some other wax melts that I made that are shaped like hearts. And I just wanted to see how it looked in the jar. So I have some other jars that have a cork top that I put my wax melts into. And again, the cork top fits my style and there's a higher probability that that jar is gonna be repurposed because it looks good as opposed to a plastic clamshell that somebody is gonna pop that one ounce uh, wax melt out and throw that plastic right into the trash. So not only does it save me money, it doesn't hurt the planet as much, which ultimately is my goal in my business. I don't like having a lot of product laying around um, because everything that we need to run a candle business, it piles up. You need packing peanuts and not necessarily bubble wrap, but if you use bubble wrap, then great. But you need something to wrap your jar in so that it doesn't break. You need boxes, you need tape, um, you, need, you need care cards you know, possibly your sample wax melts that go into your packaging. So there's so many things that we need um, if we can cut down and use some things that are more reusable. And even when our consumers are buying our product, give them something that's easily reusable and makes them want to keep your packaging as opposed to, it's not even a second thought, it's plastic, I'm gonna throw it right into the trash. So it's essentially the same reason I went to um, concrete jars. I still have some pre-made jars left, um, but it's essentially the reason I went to concrete jars because, so in my opinion, a concrete jar looks more like home decor than a, a pre-made glass jar. Um, unless it's a mason jar, which a lot of people use and will, I guarantee you, repurpose. Um, I just feel like a concrete jar looks more like home decor and would look better continuously sitting on someone's bathroom counter or on their mantle or on their desk as opposed to a regular glass jar. Um, so that's just my thoughts on it. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I went to concrete jars. It also saves me money. I can buy my concrete and have it sitting there waiting for me to make a jar when I need it, as opposed to buying a case of 48 jars. And now it's taken up so much space that I don't really necessarily have any room. If you're like me and you're working with a small space, um, I don't really have areas to put extra shelving. I don't have um, a lot of shelf space to begin with. So the shelf space that I do have um, it either is taking up, taken up by jars that I haven't made candles in yet or jars that I do have candles in. So I have to find a happy, a happy balance between the two. Right. Using the concrete jars allows me to make as little or as much as I want and also save some space and save some money. So that is pretty much it for this video. I knew it was going to be pretty short. Most of my videos are, but I just wanted to give you guys some uh, real insight on what I've gone through in my business and the things that I've had to change um, and rebrand throughout my almost two years as a candle maker. Um, it's just food for thought. You don't have to do any of the things that I talked about. You can continue to use plastic if you want to. I'm not judging anyone who does. It's just something that I wasn't comfortable doing. 
um, knowing that where I live right now, they literally came and collected our recycling bins. So even if I wanted to recycle, I couldn't. So it's just some food for thought. Um, my goal for my business is to be 90% plastic free can never be 100% plastic free because the fragrance oils that I buy come in plastic jars um, or plastic bottles, I should say. So as long as I can do a small part, it makes me feel better. So that's just my overall goal. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. I'll try to link as many things in the, bo in the description box as I can to help you guys out. And I hope to see you guys in the next video.